In the summer of 2013, Barcelona were flying high. In the midst of a furious El Clasico rivalry, they had reclaimed the crown as champions of Spain, scoring in each of the 38 matches en route to a 22nd title as record-breaking centurions. Now established as an absolute phenomenon, Lionel Messi was responsible for over 40% of their goals that campaign, while his providers, Pedro, David Villa, Alexis Sanchez and Cesc Fabregas floated in orbit of the number 10. Still under the inspiration of Pep Guardiola, Tito Villanova had organised his team to focus on possession-oriented, high-pressing attacking football. And by the season's end, Barca had further solidified their reputation as one of the most formidable teams in world football. Nonetheless, humiliation in Europe at the hands of eventual winners Bayern Munich and a bitter defeat to Los Blancos in the Supercopa blemished an otherwise brilliant campaign. Messi dependencia was a term coined and used in the Spanish media around this time, commenting on the club's dependence on their Argentine star. And the board recognised that they needed to invest in another high-profile name to muffle this notion. The transfer rumour mill had started and Barca were looking to get involved. Villa, at 31 years old, was hungry for a more prominent role and tempted by Diego Simeone's ambitious project at Atletico, he made a move to Madrid, while Thiago Alcantara departed for Bayern. Wanting to enhance their attacking prowess, the Catalans scouted for a replacement, aiming their sights specifically towards South America. In Santos, a 20-year-old winger was lighting up the Brazilian top flight and earning comparisons to Pelé. Olha a arrancada do Neymar, entra na área de novo, passou pelo marcador que é o Júnior César, bateu! Since his senior debut at 17, Neymar Jr.'s electric speed, fluid dribbling and natural flair was mesmerising onlookers as he ascended to the peak of the continent. 2011 was the year when Barcelona's notice was initially taken during the final of the FIFA Club World Cup, able to witness the youngster's quality at first hand. The Brazilian only improved from this point, scoring the goal that won the team the prestigious Puskas Award. Levitando o jogador do Santos. Aí o Neymar protegeu, fez o drible. Que lance do Neymar! And going on to become the first Brazilian to be named the South American Footballer of the Year twice consecutively since the King. As well as the extraordinary ability, he had star power by such a young age and Barca recognised his potential to not only be one of the planet's best footballers, but also a sporting icon in the way that Ronaldinho had been during his time in Catalonia. After a pair of 10 plus million euro instalments since 2011, the transfer was confirmed in early June of 2013, signing a five-year contract for the price of 57 million euros. Easily the Blaugrana's most exciting acquisition in years, he had no clear ceiling, and by sharing the pitch with Messi, the prodigy was expected to develop into a European standout who could bolster Barca's front line and, if necessary, take on a leading role in the future. Villanova, who at points had taken time away from the sidelines during the prior season due to his illness, resigned so he could focus on getting treatment and was replaced by Gerardo Martino, who wanted to stick with the attacking width, dropping Neymar out left while Messi remained central as the focal point of the offence. It was expected for the Brazilian to need an adaptation period in which he'd pick up on the more rigid tactical demands of European football and get acclimated to Barca's tiki-taka approach. He made appearances off the bench in the opening couple La Liga games and in the Supercopa visiting the Galderon, heading in his first goal for the club seven minutes after being brought on, which levelled the scoreline and after a goalless second leg at the Nou Camp, Barcelona were victors by means of Neymar's away goal. Into September, his first league start came, contributing an assist in their 3-2 win over Valencia to continue their season's flawless beginning. The Cule's first impressions of their new number 11 were very positive, as the Brazilian demonstrated glimpses of his immense talent and made a significant impact on the pitch in the first months. By mid-October, he went on a streak of five matches back-to-back -back in which he contributed a goal, and a week later he scored and assisted in Barca's 2-1 triumph as hosts to Real Madrid, 
which played a major part in forming the bond between he and the supporters. Inside 14 La Liga matches, Neymar had accumulated six goals and eight assists. While in the Champions League, he'd set up another four and netted a hat-trick against Celtic. Sharing the attack with Messi and Alexis Sanchez, the trio were lethal together, sharing 22 goals as Barca topped the table going into the winter break. However, the latter half of their campaign was riddled with setbacks. Messi's muscle tears incapacitated him for a whole month, while Neymar suffered ankle and foot injuries that opted him out of eight matches from January to May. Martino struggled to get consistent performances from his side into 2014, going from winning all but two of their first 18 La Liga matches to dropping over 20 points after Christmas. The talismanic 10 bounced back from a lukewarm start to the season and averaged a goal a game in the last 19 fixtures, keeping them ahead of Atletico, who were in close pursuit. Simeone's Coltroneros had handed the domestic champions another quarter-final upset, prolonging their European drought, and on the last day of the season, Diego Godin's equaliser clutched the title from Catalan hands. A year in which Atleti robbed Barca of the championship, and Real had both overcome them in the cup final and conquered Europe to seal La Decima, this had been another frustrating year for the Blaugrana. Though there had been ups and downs, Neymar had scored and assisted 15 times each in an impressive starting year in Spain and integrated into the squad quickly, forming friendships with fellow compatriots Dani Alves and Adriano, but also showing signs of synergy with Messi. It was a start, but nonetheless there was a missing link, and the recently appointed president, Josef Maria Bartomeu, was keen to rectify the issues, so that Barca could compete across all fronts once again. He started things off by welcoming former B-team coach Luis Enrique to take over from Martino, but considering it was a World Cup summer, player transfers was a more complicated ordeal. Into July, Sanchez was sold to Arsenal for a sum of 42 million euros, helping fund the purchase of the man to fill the Chilean's vacancy. Liverpool's number nine, Luis Suarez, had been the Premier League's standout, concluding the season with 31 goals from 33 matches, collecting the golden boot and almost every other individual accolade, making him the most informed striker on the planet. It's outrageous! It's outrageous! El Pistolero was seen as an ideal fit for Barca, as his link-up play and tenacious work rate would be stylistically compatible with the Catalans, adding some serious firepower up top. Though on their radar, Suarez wasn't a top priority until the World Cup began, and after bagging a brace in the groups versus England, Uruguay met Italy, needing all three points to escape elimination. Goalless for the majority, the main talking point of the match came in the 79th minute, when Suarez bit the shoulder of defender Giorgio Chiellini, an illegal action that wasn't noticed until after the final whistle, by which point Uruguay had advanced and Gliazuri was sent packing. This wasn't a first offence, and FIFA charged Suarez with a four-month ban, ruling him out of the rest of the tournament and any club football until October. The suspension intrigued Barca, who knew they could get him for a slightly reduced price and put forth an 82 million euro bid, which was accepted the day after the Sanchez deal, making him the most expensive striker ever at the time. Despite being uninvolved on match days, he could train with the team as of early August, enabling the marquee name to create a rapport with the squad, and he found almost instant chemistry with Messi and Neymar. As the campaign kicked off, Enrique's side were thriving even without the Uruguayan. The South American pair had marinated after a year together, forging a greater connection that was almost telepathic, with the 10 often the supplier for Neymar, and in the opening eight league fixtures, the duo were involved in 24 goals as the Blaugrana went unbeaten. October rolled around, and four days after dispatching Ajax inside the new Camp, the first El Clasico of the campaign took place. 
the most intimidating possible fixture for Suarez to make his official debut. At the Bernabeu, early excellence from Neymar, set up by the Uruguayan, gave them an advantage, but it was short-lived as the European champions thumped them 3-1. Much like Neymar, Suarez needed time to adjust and therefore wasn't exhibiting his typical predatory instincts in the face of goal. Instead, it was the other two getting on the score sheet, with Messi standing out with a pair of hat-tricks by Christmas. Still, the former Scouser was far from futile, as his individual all-round quality and relentless work rate proved useful for the team, claiming five La Liga assists in this goalless period. He ended his dry spell in a November UCL game against Apoel Nicosia, which got the ball rolling, putting another past PSG, ensuring the top spot in their group. Into the new year, Barca really started picking up speed, ripping teams apart domestically and maintaining some consistency as they ascended the table. The new number one, Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, was solid in between the sticks. Ivan Rakitic and Andres Iniesta were invaluable in the center, holding onto possession and advancing the ball. However, the stars of the show were the front three. Dubbed MSN, Messi, Neymar and Suarez, after months of icebreaking and getting familiar both on and off the pitch, this attacking trio had become something special. The Argentine was the maestro of the bunch, and as we well know, the most gifted, who could effortlessly lay waste to entire defences and create a path into which he'd drive perfect deliveries for his teammates. With supreme vision, unparalleled balance and frequent goal scoring, Messi was the brain of the triad, making things tick in the final third. The Brazilian, down his favoured left, was overwhelming. His speed, head-spinning change of direction and speciality in one-on-ones made him a genuine nightmare for fullbacks, who he either left on the floor or hopelessly chasing him down. The true Neymar was being realized, now even a regular goalscorer on top of the pure wizardry. The 23-year-old was an efficient entertainer. The Uruguayan was irrepressible as the final piece of the puzzle. His positioning, reading of the game, and clinical finishing was what people knew he would bring to Catalonia. But El Pistolero was so much more. A high-level playmaker, he was selfless in the blue and red, opting for the pass over the shot when the better choice. An unrelenting spirit also, he would press high and chase the ball like a dog, adding a fresh dimension to the entire team. The trio were so difficult to face as they interchanged positionally throughout the match, and as their time together grew, the connection improved, exchanging quick passes, making clever runs, and generally bamboozling back lines. Into 2015, the league became their playground, and between January and May, MSN scored 54 goals and gave 30 assists, with Messi in particular shining. While in the Copa del Rey, Neymar was the star, converting three braces in five games to steer them to the final. Given the form, Barca were pipped as favourites in Europe as the competition entered its knockout stage, and in February, a double from the nine helped the Spaniards overcome the English champions, Man City. Storming into the quarters, they again met the Parisians, but another brace from the Uruguayan and triple across the legs from Neymar made them semi-finalists. Bayern were bound to test them, yet with momentum on their side at home, a messy double inside three minutes came late into the tie before setting up the Brazilian to whitewash the Bavarians. For the return in Munich, the winger was once again the hero, killing the tie inside half an hour and sending them to Berlin for their first Champions League final in four years. Ahead of the game, the Blaugrana had plenty on their plate. 
A Suarez winner at the Bernabeu had boosted their edge to four points. And Enrique's squad, knowing perfection would do it, maintained an invincible run, missing out on only four points across ten games to clinch a 23rd La Liga title. Barcelona are once more the champions of Spanish football. Two weeks passed before the Copa del Rey was to be decided, hosting Bilbao for the final. For the 11th time of the campaign, Messi buried a brace, the first of which is maybe the greatest in the competition's history. And Neymar continued his goal game form in the cup to hand Xavi another piece of silverware. Whispers of the treble had loudened, and the ultimate hurdle awaited them in the form of Italian champions Juventus. With opposing techniques, Allegri's Juve were more defensively minded, while Barca preferred an aggressive style, and thus the final was an engaging watch. The Catalans began assertively, and broke the Bianconeri barrier four minutes in through Rakitic, who finished off a move that involved nine outfield players. The rest of the half was quiet, but after the break, Barca's dominance evaporated as Juve restored the balance before the hour. The pendulum could have swung either way from this point, however 10 minutes later, a rebounded shot from Messi was punted past Buffon by the number 9, restoring their lead. A disallowed Neymar goal kept a comeback on the cards, until, at the death, the Argentine countered, playing Pedro through, who slotted a pass into Neymar. This tied the 23-year-old with Ronaldo and Messi as the competition's top scorer that season, and when the whistle blew seconds later, Barcelona had made history as the only club to ever achieve the European continental treble twice. Thoroughbred champions, pure and simple. This was amongst Barca's finest seasons to date, and MSN's impact had been immense, scoring 122 goals together, the most in a season for an attacking trio in Spanish football history. Their solo qualities have blended exquisitely, producing glorious moments and moving 50% quicker than everyone else, as well as turning up in crucial moments on the road to this rare feat. It would be hard to top the year they'd had, but nevertheless, as the new season got underway, the champions continued to excel. The squad was barely changed except for the departure of legendary skipper Xavi Hernandez, and with Enrique still at the helm, the Blaugrana looked to just do it all over again. All started on a very positive note, trouncing Sevilla for the Super Cup in August after an absolute thriller in Tbilisi, and collecting all possible points from the first four league games. Diagnosed with mumps, Neymar missed some August fixtures, and Messi's knee trouble returned in October, rendering him useless for seven weeks. Still, the side coped well in absence of their talisman, with Suarez stepping up, powering home a hat-trick versus Ibar, and featuring alongside the Brazilian on the score sheet in a 4-0 demolition of Real Madrid, who were desperate to dethrone their rivals. Upon Messi's return, the trio restarted their haunting of the Spanish top flight, dismantling defences for fun and racking up a stupid tally of goals. On the 3rd of March, a win at Rayo Vallecano was their 35th game undefeated, eclipsing the 1989 Real Madrid national record, which Barca extended to 39 before the Clasico. Los Blancos were their greatest threat, and after losing to them in the derby, two more back-to-back -back losses allowed Real to narrow the gap at the table's summit. With the Great White Shark in their rear view, Barca couldn't afford to slip up, so Enrique kicked his side into gear for the lasting five league games. Visiting A Coruña, MSN pummeled Deportivo, each having a hand in their 8-0 conquest, but Suarez was named man of the match for his four goals and three assists inside the Riazor. This superb performance had given extra impetus to the team, 
and three days later, they battered Sporting Gijon, divvying up the six goals between the front three. One for Messi, Messi heads in. one for Neymar, <laughs> and another four-goal haul from the Uruguayan, who made history as the only La Liga player to ever net four goals in two back-to-back -back matches. Finding the back of the net again for the next victories over Betis and Espanyol, who were 5 0 victims to MSN, one match remained, and a single point separated Spain's juggernauts. While Real were in Coruña, the Blaugrana travelled to Granada, needing all three points to seal the two peat. Having pillaged 11 goals from the prior four games, Suarez was on an unstoppable run and came in clutch once more burying a first-half double in Andalusia before completing his hat-trick minutes ahead of the final whistle, which declared Barcelona top-flight champions going back-to-back. -back. The Copa del Rey final was penciled in for Sunday of the ensuing week, and having made child's play of the competition so far, stacking up 25 goals on the eight-game path to the finale, another thunderous MSN showing was forecast. Chaos came in the Calderon. Eleven yellows and three reds were shown, mainly to Sevilla, who managed to hold off the trio for the entire 90, but struggled to score themselves. Into extra time, it was the left-back Alba who broke the deadlock, latching onto Messi's lofted long ball. Then, at the death, the Argentine combined with Neymar to beat the offside trap and kill the tie. The domestic double had been pulled off, and MSN had reinforced their reputation as Europe's deadliest trio. In an injury-plagued year, Messi's influence went beyond statistics. Orchestral in his free role, he drifted from the right to second striker, where he either scored or forged chances on goal, providing over 65 contributions in all across the nine months. Established now as one of the best dribblers on the face of the planet, Neymar had enjoyed another prolific campaign, breaking the 20-goal barrier easily, showcasing his development in finishing, while continuing to enthrall audiences with his dazzling footwork. The MVP, however, was Suarez, who hit his prime with a career-best output of 59 goals in all, earning him the Pachichi and European Golden Shoe Awards. More than just a selfish sniper, he shared the number one spot on the league assists chart with Messi, becoming the only ever in Spain to lead La Liga in both departments. The Uruguayan's clinical form had a major hand in bettering MSN's collective goal tally from last year, taking it to a remarkable 131. For all their brilliance, this campaign lived in the shadow of the treble and their quarter-final exit to Atletico again in the Champions League was seen as a bottle job, given Barca's perfect domestic form versus Simeone. Also, their narrow La Liga triumph over Real was made futile as Zidane's squad plundered the big ears once again, announcing themselves as the continent's number one. Into a third season together, they steamrolled Sevilla to claim the Supercopa, with Messi as captain in Iniesta's absence, a role that the Argentine took up frequently in this year. Domestically, Suarez started things off with a hat-trick on match day one, to which Messi added a double in a 6-2 opener, and all continued in this familiar, high-scoring fashion. Though all three were ranked inside the top five for 2016's Player of the Year, Messi lost the Ballon d'Or in December and decided to up the ante, returning to Spain with a vengeance. Carrying the team at times, he averaged a goal per game throughout the year. And in Europe also, he was Barca's driving force, achieving back-to-back -back group stage hat-tricks and converting the winning goals against Celtic to qualify for the knockouts. Neymar had been noticeably quieter into 2017, statistically falling short of the mark he'd set before, and acting as more of an assister than scorer, yet he still proved to be a principal cog of the team, creating moments of magic as MSN continued to wreak havoc. Fabulous finish. 
The most memorable highlight of this season came in March, as Enrique's group tried to upset some cruel odds. Drawing PSG for the UCL's first knockout round, the fantasy of European conquest seemingly collapsed, enduring a 4-0 humiliation at the Parc des Princes. Barcelona absolutely ripped apart here, mauled! Barca looked lethargic, often squandering possession, and even Messi hadn't seemed himself. A miracle was their only chance. If it would happen anywhere, it would be the new Camp, where 96,000 coolers gathered in attendance, desperate for an early sign of hope. And in the third minute, this is what they got, as Suarez nodded the ball over the line to go one up. PSG kept it together as pressure mounted, but in the 40th minute, Kozawa's attempted clearance went very wrong. By the halfway point, the comeback was 50% complete, and Neymar, who had posed the greatest threat to the French back line, traded with his skipper and won a penalty, a penalty? for Messi to deal with. That's what he does. Only one away, the feeling of destiny was destroyed by Edison Cavani's half volley 12 minutes later. An away goal left Barca needing three more to advance, and as the clock ticked on, PSG's resilience shut MSN out for over 20 minutes, before, from just outside the corner of the box, the Brazilian curled a free kick past a rooted Kevin Trapp, with two minutes of the 90 remaining. 60 seconds later, Messi floated a pass into Suarez, who Marquinhos had gotten slightly too intimate with for the ref's liking, blowing for another spot kick, which Neymar this time lashed away. And scores! 5-1, that means the scores are level on aggregate. Another 40 seconds remained of the five-minute injury time, when Neymar clipped a lob into the crowded box for the fullback Sergi Roberto to latch onto. This made it 6-5 on aggregate, completing the greatest comeback in European history, dubbed La Ramontada. Involvements from each member, this tie captured the power of MSN, and Neymar in particular, whose two goals, penalty win and decisive assist, earned him the man of the match title. Amid all ecstasy, the initial four-goal drubbing was a cause for concern, and in the next round, a formidable Juventus exposed Barca's frailties in Turin, and then in Spain withheld the three-goal cushion thanks to Bonucci and Chiellini. The dream of repeating the treble had fallen flat, and with their season in danger of unravelling, they focused on the league, where, on account of their loss in Malaga, they trailed Real. The next stop was the Bernabeu, and given Neymar's three-match ban having seen red, Los Blancos had a leg up in the title race. Showing why many deem him the GOAT, Messi continued an amazing scoring streak by ruling out Casemiro's first half strike, and then, with the Clasico deadlocked at 2 all, he answered Alba's cutback for an epic 92nd minute winner, the number 10's 500th goal in the blue and red. Still reliant on Real to slip up, the Blaugrana had five matches left, in which MSN logged 15 goals and carried them to a perfect record to end the campaign. But it wasn't enough, as goals from CR7 and Benzema put the game beyond Malaga, capturing Perez a 33rd La Liga trophy. Void of league or European silverware, it was hard to see this season as anything more than a failure. There was a chance of saving it, however, and thanks to efforts from Messi and Neymar, they took it, overcoming Alaves as the first team to collect three consecutive Copa del Reyes since the 1950s. 2016-17 had been a sign of the times for Barca. With aging players and a weaker team overall, their dependence on MSN had reached an all-time high. Amassing 111 goals together, with Messi averaging over a goal a game, the trio's third campaign side by side once again showed their offensive proficiency. And though they thrust Barca to an impressive 90 points total, Madrid's overall strength bettered them in the end. Changes were needed to achieve a brighter future, 
but one that wasn't anticipated came that summer. In August 2017, Neymar's legal team paid off his release clause, a staggering 222 million euros that was triggered by PSG. The deal made him the most expensive footballer of all time, more than doubling Pogba's United move a year prior and tied the Brazilian to the Parisian club until at least 2022. Seen by the club owners as a way of finally establishing PSG as a global sporting powerhouse and by Neymar himself as a chance to take on the prominent role, both parties saw this as a chance to raise their profiles. Probably with the Ballon d'Or in mind, he felt overshadowed by Messi's immense presence and wanted to cast his own at a growing juggernaut who can guarantee him both UCL football and the MVP spot. Messi and Suarez stayed put, but this was the breaking of MSN, the most fruitful, deadly and entertaining trio in the sport's history. Since the Brazilian bid farewell, the club have tried to rekindle a similar spark with high-profile signings like Ousmane Dembele, Philippe Coutinho and Antoine Griezmann, but the millions were ultimately spent in vain. For reasons such as injuries and the extreme pressure, the level of consistent form that Neymar exhibited couldn't be matched, and as the lasting members drifted out of their prime years, the club suffered. Hitting a rut, the Uruguayan jumped ship for Atletico, where he added a fifth La Liga, and after a year alone, Barca's all-time top scorer emotionally took his leave reuniting with Neymar to complete the jigsaw of another menacing triad. In the modern era of the sport, no one has seen anything quite like MSN. Three world-class players at the absolute peak of their powers, able to combine with such fluid ease and achieve an absurd scoring total of over 360 goals in 152 matches together. Short, but sweet, it only lasted three years. However, the trio's legacy is massive, regarded by those with the fortune of watching them, the most potent front line of all time.